Today's topic is Object Manager. The Object Manager is a tool used to duplicate, copy, and migrate uh, pro uh, objects between different projects or the same project with different versions, such as dev to test, etc. So if we're going to take a look at it, let's start with duplicating the project. So this is the case where usually you want to copy uh, one metadata and make a copy of it. So this is happens between you know when we're trying to create a dev and test environment etc so I'm just going to go ahead and use the object manager duplicate I'm just going to duplicate the tutorial create a duplication of it obviously I need to select the source and the target and you know I have some options to whether uh, I want to rename or enable different items I'm just going to make it as simple as possible also, because I'm copying it from the same project source to the same project source, I have a little bit less items to worry about. But if I was copying it from one project source to another, I would have much more options uh, specifically related to user access and security and configuration items. But when we're talking about the same project source, we don't have to deal with that. Once I'm done making all my selections in regards to the different objects, I have a few more options to choose from and then whether I want to do some logging or not. As I said, I'm making it simple. So I'm going ahead and going to be disabling all the logs. Once I'm ready, you know, it gives you a summary of what are your options and that's that means I'm ready to execute, which takes time. I skipped over it. It takes about 15 minutes, 10-15 minutes depending on the size of your project. All right, so once I have duplicated it, now I have the two projects, the duplicate and the other the original. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this new metric and then create a new report just to show you how the migration can happen. Now, as I'm creating them in one project, obviously the projects are not going to be similar anymore. So one of these projects, the tutorial, has the new items. So now I'm going to use the object manager to copy those, pretend those are like something like test to and dev or dev and production etc so I'm going to go and find the new reports that I created um, or the new report an object that I created and copy it <coughs> so let's say I want to copy a report over that uses that new metric I should expect it at least to pick up the dependency which is the new metric as well automatically so I'm just going to paste it <coughs> it'll do a dependency check there it is it count, caught the metric as well, and now it copied the metric and the report, not just the report. So that's the simplest way of copying over from one environment to another. Let's take a look. What if I did a copy, or let's make another modification. So I'm going to update my metric first and see what I can do with it. So let's update the metric and edit it as well to modify it. Just trying to make some modification. By making these modifications, the object, uh, the metric object, now has a new, uh, what we'd call version ID, which is not the same as the object ID. Just saying, it's telling my strategy that this is a newer version. So now, when I go ahead and want to make a copy, I could copy it in the same folder as the source, if I want to. So let's look at that. And once I copy it in the source, I'll do the different dependency and it says, what do you want to do is you want to use the existing one. Now, just because I renamed it, it's not going to treat it as a new object. It's going to identify that the updated metric is the same as the old metric or the what we call new metric. And it will overwrite it. But what if I wanted to place it in the new environment in a different place? Let's see what happens. I'm going to replace it. So it's going to take the updated metric, put it there. And if we go uh, back to our previous folder, we realize that the uh, former metric has disappeared. Because remember, these are overwriting objects with the same object ID. So just by renaming an object, you're not creating a new ID, but you are creating a new version. So keep in mind that you know just by renaming objects, you are not you're still associating the same object ID. And that's a cool actually feature because sometimes you rename things, you don't want to create duplicates in the production environment, for instance. You want to maintain a solid um, uh, copy with items that remain 
intact with the reports that they are belonging to and the reports also have an ID and a version ID which captures all the dependencies as we saw earlier but uh, let's take a quick look yeah so an object that just is migrated from one environment to another will have the same object ID they do not change object IDs from one environment to another but what if you had a situation where let's see what where you copied over an item such as we want to copy over some modification that we created it'll tell us okay what are your uh, options do you use existence and what do we do with the old version now in this case because we copied the same report and it had the same version ID over it even though it had a dependence and all that nothing really changes because it recognizes that the same version ID is being used meaning that there is no change really between one environment to another so that's a safe kind of guard about saving you effort of copying items over and over but what if we wanted to copy so many items like there's we had a a release and we have too many items you could use this to upgrade things and many people do it this way using the object manager or you can use the project merge the project merge lets you merge all the different items in a folder or the whole project uh, with specifying a set of rules so what it does it treats the it goes through the whole project follows a set of rules that we specify while merging from one environment to another this is very handy when you have a lot of changes to make. However, the catch with this is you have to be very careful. Are you, you don't you don't want to overwrite some of the configuration items. You want to maybe overwrite some of the objects or the schema objects, etc. It'll give you those choices, but you just need to be cautious about what you're doing because you might overwrite a lot of things. So here we go. We can choose what do we do with schema, what do we do with different items, and what do we do with configuration. Uh, usually you want to replace everything except the configuration because you might have an environment with different configuration than your source environment however that might not be the case but you might have even more granular needs that you might not want to replace or you might not want to keep existing so those are something like you know security filters etc you might not want to replace the target with the source you also have more capability of controlling individual folders or individual items so that you can have instead of like a generic one fits all rules you can have specific rules for specific folders that you don't want to be replaced or you don't want to be overridden etc and again you know everything can be uh can be logged uh in your before you finalize every uh, your uh, merge you also want to be careful about acls acls can vary from one environment to another so I would recommend you looking into it and making sure you do not overwrite your ACLs unless you intentionally wanted to write overwrite your ACLs. So once that's ready, you, it'll give you a warning letting you know that it's going to lock the system, meaning you cannot access this project from any environment while this operation is going on. Once you kick it off, it'll take it'll take a good ten minutes or more, depending on the schema. And if you try to access the project meanwhile, it'll tell you it is locked. Do you want to unlock it and stop the process? Obviously, you don't unless you ran into an error. It'll give you a pop-up later on telling you, okay, you're done. All right, one more thing we can look into here is creating packages. So one thing is we saw we did the manual op procedure, but what if you wanted to do a create a package and send it to your admin? Say, you know, here's here's what I want you to migrate. Instead of giving him a list of items to migrate, you can create a package of items and actually you can pre-determine uh, what's going to happen to each item. So here we had one metric that we're, you know, we, we're going to add this metric and we're going to create a package for it. And once we save the package in a external folder, we can go and use it and import it into a destination or a target project just by referring to it using the import tool and selecting it from wherever we saved it. We can edit it further, whatever that package before we proceed. And there we go. Now this uh, migration has happened using a package. Remember to always update the schema after every migration. Okay. Now we can also use the command manager 
Command Manager has tons of different commands, but one of them is comes in very handy, uh, which allows you to migrate projects as well and import packages using the different command lines like here, import package from and uh, give them the source of the package and the project name or the source project name. This way you can give your admin uh, a command line or a script or a procedure and you can always give them the procedure to update the schema as well when you give them an import procedure because it'll be significant especially if you're updating a schema but to be safe you always want to do that. Test your script, make sure it's good. You can save it as a procedure or as a script and pass it on to your admin to run this script rather than having to use the object manager. This just makes sure that you remove their need uh, or the dependency on them knowing how to use the object manager. You basically create the script for 